So the past 10 years I've been taking on pretty big expeditions around the world um, from cycles to treks to climbing mountains to hacking through jungle to crossing deserts but the most recent world first was actually a China expedition called Mission Yangtze and that was an attempt to become the first person, first recorded person in the world to walk the entire length of the Yangtze River and the Yangtze River is the biggest river here to run through a single nation and third biggest river in the world at 4,000 miles and it took 352 days to complete only completed it three weeks ago very skinny I feel very skinny <laughs> I've lost a lot of weight but I'm feeling good mentally and physically age 19 I set off traveling and you know the first few weeks were great but I realized I was very much on the beaten track. You know, I shared the same photos, stories, and experiences as all of the rest of the travelers, which was great and it was fine. I was meeting people from all over the world, which was awesome. But I found I wanted to create my own sort of stories and unique experiences. So uh, the first adventure, which I believe was the catalyst, was when I was in Cambodia. You know, we had to look after our money. So we were on a shoestring budget, so, we didn't want to spend on buses and you know all of the overland transport so we bought a bicycle um, and we had an inclination for adventure uh, so the bicycle cost us about ten dollars and we ended up cycling Cambodia and the entire length of Vietnam very reckless at those early stages you know just think on that cycle we had no pump no puncture repair kit we were hit by mopeds dodged by lorries chased by dogs um, you know so it was very intense but after two and a half weeks we made it and I was just hooked then. I found my niche, I found my passion, and from there I, I didn't want to stop. And Mongolia was in 2014. That was my first world record expedition, and that was to attempt to become the first person to walk completely solo and unsupported. Uh, that was the record across Mongolia. So carrying everything that I needed to survive on a trailer weighing 18 stone or 120 kilograms. And that was three weeks over the Altai Mountains, five weeks across the Gobi Desert where I almost lost my life, and three weeks up through the Mongolian Steppe. Uh, 1,500 miles taking 78 days to complete. You know, a massive journey with many stories, but you know, that was the sort of catalyst then to this kind of career. It's got, it got really lonely at times, yeah, for sure. I think I went over eight days without seeing a single human. And the Gobi Desert was the most challenging though, and that's the time I really needed someone or something. I ran really low on water. The heat exceeded 40 plus degrees Celsius. There was no natural shelter. There was no breeze. And over the coming weeks, my water was getting lower and lower from severe dehydration. I was hallucinating, I was delirious and I almost felt my organs drying up. I was in a real bad way. I won't go into major details, but I was in a real bad way. And actually the only sort of respite I could get was hiding underneath my trailer that I was pulling behind me. And it was when I was resting that I realized if I continue resting, because it had gone on for weeks now, and I now had four days to get to the next water source at my worst state. So um, I realized if I continue to rest under the trailer and don't keep getting up and pushing on, I'm gonna quite easily die out here in the Gobi. I would get up, I would strap the four point harness trailer back onto me. It was now sinking in the soft sand because of the desert. So I was leaning 90 degree angle completely forward for 100 meters before resting again for another five minutes. And this happened for the next four days, 100 meters, five minutes, until eventually I did just about, very luckily made it to the next water source. There were snow blizzards in the Altai, sand blizzards in the Gobi Desert, but you know, the locals threw out, amazing. I'll always try to spend a little bit of time with the locals. You know, there's no, there's no better knowledge than local knowledge. So I'll be asking them what's edible, what's not, what's dangerous, what's not. Um, and I'll just try to pick up, they hold a massive amount of knowledge of course, but I'll try to pick up just a small percentage that may be able to help me on my journeys. I was on such a, a strict budget that I couldn't even afford gym membership. So I created, just in my back garden, I had my uncle drop me off a tractor tire 
and I bought a sledgehammer from my, my local um, shop, Sturma, um, and I would use a lot of body weight exercises. So I would flip the tractor tire, I would beat it with the sledgehammer, I'd be performing push-ups, pull-ups, I'd be running up mountains, uh, cycling with a rucksack on my back, just to, you know, I, I think the more you make yourself uncomfortable, the more comfortable you become. So that's what I think I was doing. I wasn't just training and preparing for the physical um, challenges that I would face. I was training for more so the mental, you know, the mindset that I would need. If I was thinking of worst case scenario, and if unfortunately worst case was to happen when I'm out there, at least somewhat I'd be mentally prepared enough to hopefully tackle it because it won't come as a shock. It'll come as something I have visualized, I have prepared for, I knew that this potentially could occur and now it's occurred, so deal with it. Mongolia was the catalyst to make me believe that actually it sparked an interest, it was for good causes. I was raising funds for the Red Cross, I was spreading awareness on uh, climate change and the effects that it has on the nomadic way of life. So I wanted to use the publicity that my expedition would generate to actually shine a light on on the real unsung heroes, which is what they are. These are the real guys grinding voluntarily with no coverage, uh, working hard, often, often risking their lives to protect the, the environment. At the end of the expedition, go back in and help be a voice for those who don't have a voice, or help be a voice for those who really need protecting, who need more awareness. Madagascar is an island often forgotten about. Um, was for me just, yeah, really humbling, and really an incredible feeling to be able to do that. And I think something that stuck with myself is holding the vision. You know, when I were in those early days when I first anticipated heading off traveling, it just seemed too big, too daunting. Uh, and I just think it couldn't be done. And then, you know, the stakes grew bigger and bigger. I was then planning expeditions that had never been done because I always held that vision. It doesn't matter if no one else sees it for you. Whatever dream or whatever goal or vision you have, it doesn't matter if no one else doesn't see it for you. It's important that you can see it for yourself.